So Apple just launched their M5 chip lineup. And if you haven't been following every generation of Apple Silicon, this might sound like just another spec bump. But the M5 actually represents something bigger. It's not just an upgrade, it's the start of a new cycle for Apple's entire lineup, from iPad to MacBook to even the Vision Pro. So let's talk about what's new, what's weird, and whether now is actually a good time to upgrade. Welcome to Zestia's Tech, by the way. Be sure to leave a like and join the conversation in the comments below. The M5 is debuting in the iPad Pro, the MacBook Pro, and kind of surprisingly, the new Vision Pro. And that's already a clue that Apple's planning for this chip to stick around for a while. Every couple of generations, Apple releases a chip that becomes the new baseline for multiple products, something that lasts well beyond a single year. The M2 was that chip last time. It ended up powering everything from the MacBook Air to the Vision Pro to the iPad Air. The M5 looks like it's taking on that role for this next era. And the performance numbers Apple's throwing around are pretty wild. They're claiming up to 45% faster GPU performance in ray-traced apps compared to M4, four times the AI GPU compute, and a 20% faster CPU in the MacBook Pro version. They've also boosted memory bandwidth from 120 gigabytes per second on M4 to 153 gigabytes per second, and doubled SSD read and write speeds on both the MacBook and iPad Pro. Even compared to the already impressive M4, these are pretty big leaps for a generation. Now keep in mind, Apple's marketing loves mixing relative stats like 1.6 times faster and four times compute performance, which don't always translate to real world speed. But even with a grain of salt, this is a pretty major jump year over year. Beyond the raw numbers, the M5 is built on a refined three nanometer process. It's still based on the M4's architecture, but optimized even better for thermals and efficiency. That means better sustained performance under load, which is a big deal for creative pros and gamers who've run into thermal throttling on thinner devices. The GPU has also been re-engineered for higher compute density, and it's the first M-series chip to really lean into AI and machine learning acceleration. Apple's neural engine is reportedly twice as fast as the one on M4. So this isn't just about rendering or compiling, it's about where Apple's going next with on-device AI. So, gaming has always been a bit of a punchline on the Mac, but Apple's been slowly, very slowly, trying to change that. With the M5, they're claiming 1.6 times faster frame rates in games compared to the M4. That could mean the difference between 30 and 45 FPS in something like Shadow of the Tomb Raider. It's still not amazing, but it's progress. What's more interesting is the AI-assisted upscaling Apple's reportedly testing in macOS 16. Apple hasn't confirmed anything official, but with the new neural engine and GPU architecture, it's clear they're trying to compete with features like NVIDIA's DLSS and AMD's FSR. If that's where Apple is headed, this generation might finally be the one where the Mac becomes at least viable for gaming. Not necessarily a replacement for a Windows PC, but a genuine option for developers to target. I wanna believe. Now. Where things could get interesting is AI. Apple's been pushing Apple intelligence for a while, and like gaming, it's a bit of a punching bag, and that's entirely fair. It relies on a mix of local and cloud processing, and uh, let's just say it hasn't hit its stride yet. But the M5 could change that. Apple's clearly positioning this generation as the foundation for local AI performance. With four times the AI GPU compute and that faster neural engine, Apple can actually run more of its AI tasks directly on device, which fits perfectly with their privacy-first philosophy. If Apple continues to optimize macOS and iOS for local AI engines, we might start seeing genuinely impressive features, especially in creative software like Logic Pro, Final Cut, and my favorite, DaVinci Resolve, which already supports Apple's neural engine acceleration for things like noise reduction and AI masking. So the product lineup. Let's talk about where these chips are actually showing up because it's kind of surprising. The iPad Pro, new M5 iPad Pro is faster, sure. 3.5 times better AI performance, new N1 networking chip and faster cellular data, but otherwise it's the same design as last year's M4 iPad Pro. If you already bought that one, there is no real reason to upgrade. 
This continues Apple's trend of throwing insane performance into devices most people just use to browse the web and watch YouTube. Great for longevity, but maybe not the most exciting product cycle. And then there's the Vision Pro. Apple quietly refreshed it with the M5 chip. A new dual-knit headband and slightly better cameras for the pass-through view. Less motion blur, a little more clarity, up to 10% more pixels rendered, and 120Hz refresh rate for smoother motion. But this is fun. There's no trade-in program for M2 Vision Pro owners. So if you dropped $3,500 on one last year, congratulations. Apple's basically telling you to sell it yourself and buy another. It's kind of brutal, especially for a company that usually prides itself on smooth upgrade paths. Just another reminder not to buy a first-generation Apple product. And finally, the MacBook Pro. It's about 20% faster on CPU, 45% faster on GPU, and two times faster SSD speeds. The real story here, though, is that the base-level M5 MacBook Pro is getting so powerful it's starting to eat into the need for the Pro and Max versions. If you're a student, creative, or even a light editor, there's less and less reason to spend extra money on the high-end configurations. So what about the M5 Pro, Max, and Ultra? Based on past timelines, Apple usually releases the Pro and Max versions about three to six months after the base chip. And the Ultra comes roughly a year later, although we still haven't gotten the Ultra for the M4, so are they gonna skip it? Are we gonna go straight to M5 Ultra? Are we, what are we doing here? If they follow the same pattern, we'll probably see M5 Pro and Max early next year, and potentially M5 Ultra in late 2025, or probably 2026. That's a long wait, but the payoff could be massive. Imagine scaling up this GPU architecture and AI acceleration to 32 or even 64 GPU cores. For video editors, 3D artists, and developers, that's going to be very exciting. Personally, I get excited every time Apple pushes its chips forward. Not just for the power users, but everyone else. If you never touch Blender or compile code, these efficiency gains mean better battery life, longer device support, and more room for new macOS features that actually use that power. That said, if you care about raw performance, the base M5 isn't your endgame. You'll still want to wait for the Pro, Max, or Ultra. I'm still disappointed that we never got an M4 Ultra, that one just never happened, but they might introduce it really late like they did the M3. Hopefully Apple will continue to streamline its development and we might actually get all three chips at once. I can dream. As a professional video editor myself, the idea of upgrading from an M2 Ultra to an M5 Ultra is the kind of thing I'm gonna bother my boss about to buy for me. It could make a really big difference in the way that I work every single day. And yeah, it's easy to clown on Apple intelligence right now, but I respect Apple's approach to local processing. It takes care of a lot of ethical issues, and you don't have to rely on an internet connection. Apple doesn't seem to be chasing the cloud. They're investing in infrastructure that could actually pay off over time. More powerful chips mean better on-device AI, better privacy, and hopefully a better experience. So that's the M5 lineup. Faster, smarter, and a little bit confusing when it comes to who it's actually for. If you're an M1 user, Apple's clearly trying to get you to upgrade. If you're on the M2 or M3, I'd say wait around and see what happens next. But what do you think? Are you impressed by the M5 chip, or does it feel like another incremental update? Let me know your thoughts down below. Be sure to leave a like and join the conversation in the comments. Thank you so much for listening to me, Yap. I'll see you in the next one.